Hey, what's going on? KSA Chris here, the Real Estate Blitz. And today, um, somebody had asked me about um, how I handle commission objections. And I was like, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so when, when it comes to commission for me and telling people, you know, what I'm going to do as far as commission, how much I'm going to charge or how much I do charge, uh, I think I've mentioned it before on other videos. I've never talked about how I deal with the objection, but I've mentioned it on other videos. To me, it's very simple. I, I look at my time, my money, and my energy. Depending on those three things, that's what, in my mind, dictates the commission that I'm going to charge somebody. Uh, it, honestly, it could be, I know for banks and some other people, we have some investors. Uh, we do it for like, I think, you know, if it's a done deal, we, we have banks call us and, uh, not acquisition managers, what are they? Um, asset managers, goodness gracious. And for them, we'll do like two and a half percent. It's just a flat fee of two and a half percent because they already have the buy side, they have the sell side. It's really just paperwork. Um, you know, for other things, if I have a house where it's going to be basically on the market and off the market within two hours, uh, or I have people already lined up, you know, I'm going to adjust my commission. I don't see the point, especially if I'm not paying any money and investing no time other than paperwork. I don't see the point in charging more, but that's my opinion. Now, I know some people uh, think that's like, that's the devil. And that's fine, uh, because here's the thing. Those some people, they don't feed my kids and they don't have to do my business and uh, you know, I just don't see the point uh, on on something that's like completely easy. We just did a deal um, recently. It was a very high end deal. The buyer, the the seller brought us the buyer. Uh, buyer was already pre-qualified. They've already negotiated everything. They just basically wanted us to put everything together. So to put it all together, we just basically charged them for the paperwork. Oh, my gosh, Chris, you should have gotten six percent. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. Um, but anyways, that's not why we're here today. Um, today, because here's the thing, I want 6% commission. In fact, depending on the energy and how much I have to invest, I charge more. Um, sometimes I'll do six plus, uh, you got to pay for all my marketing. If I'm going to have to drop, you know, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000 in the marketing um, to be paid at close of escrow. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just charge a flat 7 or 8%. If I'm bringing an extra amount of value, if it's being renovated to sell, you know, blah, 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 there's, there's different things. I'll charge more because it's worth more to me. I, I have to do more. And if I have to do more, I'm gonna charge more. So how I usually handle the objection. If I say to somebody, look, I'm gonna charge you 6%. And, or I get asked the question a lot, you know, um, what do you charge? First off, commissions are always negotiable. I'm not gonna, I'm not a, a fan of just saying, this is all I do and that's it. And, and because I don't know what I'll do or not do, it just really depends again on my criteria, right? And I don't know what you're going to do. I think it should depend on your criteria as well. Um, but, you know, if they balk at the commission, I say, hey, I'm going to charge you 5%. This is why, this is what's going on. Um, I actually had somebody recently, um, I won't use his name because I think he watches some of my videos. Uh, he sat down, did a great interview and um, told him the commission. And that was a big sticking point for him. He says, well, I need it to be less. And I says, well, you know, when we talked, you had mentioned that you're trying to accomplish a specific task. I told you not only can I meet your task, but I can exceed your task and I'm going to get you more money. Like I've shown you the science. And then he says, well, I have a guy that'll do it for, uh, I think I told him 5%. He says, well, I have a guy I'll do it for 3%. I say, fantastic. I'm just not that guy. I don't, I'm not going to do your house for 3%. Um, but, you know, if that's what you want to do, I'm going to wish you the best of luck. He says, no, I want to work with you. I say, great, fantastic. But he wanted more information. So I said, this is how I break it down. Okay. You have, um, and I'll, in, in, in this example, I usually use a clothing store, something that people, you know, understand. Um, you have a choice. You can go to Walmart, Target, right, or Nordstrom's. And the reality is you go to each one of those stores to accomplish a different task. When I go to Walmart, I'm looking to buy something that's cheap. I know it's going to break. I don't need it to last long. I just want something that's cheap, that's going to be functional, and that'll get me where I need to be at this moment. So instant, a form of instant gratification. That's why I go to Walmart. I go to Target if I want something that's relatively cheap, will last a little bit longer, but it still kind of is what it is. But if I want something that's going to last a lifetime, something where I know it's gonna it's it's of great quality, and I know when I go there I'm gonna be taken care of. I'm going to Nordstrom's because again I'll go back to the Walmart thing. Um, 
they are nice in Walmart, and it almost seems like the more people that show up, they start closing down lines as opposed to opening them to let more people come through so they can make more money. It's baffling. Target, they're a little bit nicer. Nordstrom's, they go out of their way to ensure that you, the client, are taken care of, and they will do whatever it takes to ensure that you, your quality thing, the purchase that you're going to do is taken care of, right? So I just tell people, I say, look, um, you, you basically have three different avenues that you can go. You can go with, uh, it's cheap, it's functional, uh, but it's going to break. You can go with something that's middle of the road. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's cheaper. It's going to be pretty good, but it's uh, still what it is. Or you can go with quality. So, you know, I, I just say, do you, do, you, do you want Nordstrom's or do you want Target if, or Walmart? If you want Walmart, that's what 3% is. You, you're buying it because it's cheap and you need to know that it's probably going to break. It just is. It's, it's going to break. You're not going to get what you're looking for. And if you're okay with not getting what you're looking for, great. Go with 3%. If you want quality, if you want to ensure that you're getting the best product, you're getting the best service, and that whatever you get is going to be something that will last you a lifetime, well, I'm the Nordstrom's, I'm, I'm the Nordstrom's real estate. I'm the right guy. Now, are you going to pay more? You sure are. But you're never going to have any problems because here's the truth. Anytime you buy or sell a home, because you'll hear it all the time, like, well, it's a sell itself. I got a client right now. So I was going on an interview. He ended up, he was my buyer. Uh, he was purchasing a home that I had for sale. And uh, he had a house that he was going to sell. And I says, hey, I'd love an opportunity to at least come and interview for the job. And uh, he gives me a call. He says, hey, I apologize, but uh, I had a guy show up and and he was cheaper than, than what you said you would do it for before we even showed up. And we went ahead and went with him. I said, okay, cool. Well, he calls me almost daily, wishing he had interviewed us, wishing that he had interviewed us and given us a listing. In fact, he's like, well, I'll just wait until it's canceled and then I'll just bring you guys back in. Cool. Um, you know, yes, you're going to pay more. However, that's what it is. The other one that I use, good, fast or cheap, good, fast or cheap. It's like a triangle. I wonder if I could draw this. Here, I'll draw this for y'all. I wonder if I got a marker. Yeah, I do. Hold on. All right. Yeah. My camera should see this. Good. Fast. Cheap. Okay, so this is the, the triangle. Looks like it's written backwards. Is that written backwards? Anyways, you know how you can read that. Good, fast, or cheap. Here's how this works. You can only pick two. You can only pick two. If you want it good and you want it cheap, it won't be fast. If you want it good and you want it fast, it won't be cheap. If you want it cheap and you want it fast, it won't be good. See where I'm going here? You can only pick two. You cannot have all three. Yes, you can, Chris. Whatever. You know, um... I guess you can. There might be somebody that's a magical unicorn out there where they'll give you all three. Um, but, you know, it, that's pretty much a paradigm. And I tell them, good, fast, or cheap. I'm really good. I'm really fast. I'm extremely effective. But I'm not cheap. So, anyways, figured I'd put that out there. That's how I handle the uh, commission objection. Everybody handles it a little bit differently. Um, I just, you know, I think the way I do listing appointments, maybe I'll do a listing appointment one of these days. I don't know. Like on video or something. But, uh, you know, to me, I spend a majority of my time because I've already pre-prepped them with everything. I've already sent my pitch and I've done everything already verbally by phone and also online digital. Um, I'm showing up to tell them how I'm going to sell their house. And I spend a majority of my time building rapport, actually getting to know them. And I deeply believe the reason why so many agents are getting asked the commission question. I deeply believe the reason why so many agents are having a hard time in listing appointments is because the people that they show up to interview with just don't trust them. They, they just uh, they just don't trust them. And I, that's why I spend a majority of my time just building that trust, building that relationship. And uh, on occasion, when I have to cross this bridge, the commission bridge, um, you know, that's how I explain it to them. You can find somebody cheaper. Uh, and and uh, you got no issues with me if you do that. Uh, but I know what I'm going to do for you. And if you want somebody that's going to make this, you know, so I use the dentist analogy. I used this yesterday on the listing appointment I did yesterday. Um, at the end of the day, buying or selling a house, just like going to the dentist, 
I could lie to you if I'm the dentist and say, this is pain free. You're going to come to the, the, the you're going to come to my dentist and you'll never experience a drop of pain. Look, if there's somebody in your mouth rooting around with metal in your mouth, there's going to be some pain, whether it's before, during, or after. It's just, it's inevitable. The goal is, is if a dentist is really good, they limit it to where it's bearable and you walk away feeling like you had a good experience. In real estate, buying or selling a house, it's next to impossible. There are, good Lord, I love it when we have these transactions where there's like, it just started and it ended and everybody was happy. But there's always going to be something. There's always going to be some type of pain. My job is to keep it as painless as possible. There is no such thing as a painless dentist, nor is there a painless real estate transaction. The question is, how much pain do you want to put up with? You can save money, but you're going to be in pain. Or you could pay a little bit more, and this could turn out to be okay. You're going to walk away saying, you know what? I'm glad I did that. Anyway, that's all I got today. Appreciate y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.